Hi, welcome to this video on the Plans Express Loft Tools. My name is Thomas Brooks and I'll be showing you several of the features available to allow you to do roof drawings either for new build or renovation. In front of me now I have a set of walls, external, just to outline the perimeter of the building. It's got some doors and windows in there and a set of stairs to allow me to showcase the features when I move to the next level. This could be a ground floor for a bungalow, it could be the first or second storey before putting a loft room or space inside. To do the next level for the loft space, I will need to create a level itself. You may already have done this if this is going to be part of a multi-storey building. To do this, I'm going to go to the Views in 3D tab, I'm going to click Level, and set the level as required. Now the base height is zero, matching the ground floor of this walls as they are now. But the wall height, I need to set to 2625, so it correlates the height of the walls that are there currently. I'm going to click OK. And the command window on the bottom there, on the left hand side, is saying give reference point. So I'm going to click the top right hand corner here. Now the reference point is the point of building that goes all the way from the top to the bottom, where they're stacked upon. I'm going to left click once, move my mouse to the top left here, clear the building, click once and start moving my mouse to see the perimeter box start to form. Move my mouse clear to the bottom right here, left click and that is now placed. Anything inside that box will be rendered in the 3D preview and also for elevations you start in here. Anything outside of will not be drawn. The levels box also serves another purpose. If I come to the pink perimeter line here and left click to select, I can use my menu click in my case that's set to right click, you may have middle mouse depending on your setup. And as I menu click, I can select copy selection from the menu. Doing so the command window asks for give reference point. So I'm going to click on the top right here, left click, move my mouse to see the preview form, or shift to get a nice straight line as you may want to put some construction lines going across to align things, such as say any stairs changes you make or walls that you may draw afterwards. Left click to place. The next thing that pops up is the copy plan options. Now this will give the base height which is the total of the heights of walls and levels below the level you are now. So there's only one which is 2625. The height of this wall are set as 2625 but I'm going to change this to zero and you'll see that that also changes the height of the wall for external walls down here. And I am on level 2. On the select items to copy, I do want to show the external walls as I'm using them as my footprint for the roof, but I don't need doors, windows or openings. The remove foundations and footings is already ticked. I don't need any internal walls, though there are none to copy. And once I'm happy with my selection, click OK. And the next story will be created. Now, Automatically, these stairs have been set as non-estimated, but if I was to be drawing these and the bottom half of these were not visible, I'm just going to highlight these now, go to the Modify and Selection tab, and click Explode. This could prove useful later on, as if I highlight these now, they're all individual lines that I can delete, so if the bottom two steps or so are not visible on the loft plan, you can remove them. The next two steps are to draw in the roof itself, and two tools that will help us judge the space we have within this loft area. So that will be upstand and collared ceiling. To first draw the roof, I'm going to go to Roofs and Attics, go to my Roofs drop down, Tiled Cut Roof, and select 40 Degree Cut Roof. Just going to confirm the dimensions in the menu this time, so 40 degrees, thickness of covering, thickness of roof structure, in yellow as they're going to be represented on the 3D, You'll see the items there in white for just the estimating. I don't have any gablets or uh, flow of openings to consider. But I will set the spacing of the tar lathe, so basically the batten gauge, to 0.3 as I may intend to have this roof to have pan tiles. Click finish and the Next step is to pick the style of roof to start with. So I have apex roof, hip roof, apex roof with barn hip, mansard roofs, gable roofs, hip roof with gablet, and lean-to or mono pitch roofs. For this one, we're going to keep it nice and simple and just have an apex roof. 
but you can see the wide selection of roofs you can start with. Upon selecting the apex roof, it's going to give me some indications on how to draw that roof, and also some advice on how to merge other roofs in, as you'll see there. So I come to this now. If I have a apex coming into an apex, I can draw the perimeter box, as you'll see doing on the first one, to merge them together. I'm going to click Finish, and the command window will say, Give first corner of roof, use outer face of wall. So that means I'm going to come up to the top left here, left click once, move my mouse down to the bottom right, and left click again. Now I have the base footprint of the roof to use. As I move my mouse, the direction of the ridge will change. I want this to be an up and over with the eaves on the front and back. So once that's aligned as I like, left click to place. It will ask me if there's any additional drawing tools I want to use at this point. Now, if I was drawing a normal roof, I may wish to add these in, such as purlins, vaulted ceiling, or a flat ceiling below. But in this case, none of these are going to be a requirement for the time being. Click Done. Many of the options that were available there for ceilings and such are going to be available under the Attic options, with a few extra options tied to them to be a bit more in line with the Attic structure. Now we have the roof drawn, I'm going to come to the Attic drop-down, and I'm going to click Upstand Walls for Cut Roof, and select 0.9 meter high plastered and insulated upstand with steelwork. Of course you can select no steelwork and draw the steels in yourself if you've got a more complicated roof shape. You may have no steelwork as part of the upstands and have them again built elsewhere. Or if it's a certain type of new build that won't require it, again you can completely skip that out. It's entirely up to you how you construct this. The important things for this 3D are the items in yellow, but we can define number of top runners, intermediate runners, bottom runners and such, and if the sides are applied for extra strength. This is also the first time we're going to encounter a important figure that we're going to come across several times as we go through the loft tools. And that is floor structure relative to top of wall plate. So level of floor structure relative to top of wall plate. 0.2 is the default. So that's the floor is sat on timbers which are then sat on the wall plate. Generally fine for defaults. But if you have a floor that is built onto timbers that are sat on the timbers of existing building inside, and then they're sat on wall plate, you could be going up to 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Especially if you are having, say, steels supporting an internal roof above an already existing roof that you're not going to disturb. You also may have dwarf walls, so the sides of the roof may rise up 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and the floor would be below the wall plate, in which case you'd have a minus figure in there. For now, I'm just going to leave that as 0 0.2 and click OK confirm the rest of the dimensions though as I've got a upstand front and back and I'll only have the crane there for one day for both I may put 0.5 as my number of days so I've got half a day allocated to each and my half the number of days to fix that as well for the steel click next then click finish the next step is incredibly simple it asks you to select the roof plane. So I'm going to hold my mouse on the top one here and then just left click and automatically it's picked the distance between the walls to place that upstand wall. Using the pitch of the roof that we've just selected it can calculate this distance in that it needs to place. So all the working out is done for us and we know that if we want a 0.9 upstand that is where it will place within the roof. I'm going to right click to bring my tool back select on the menu there and this time I'm going to accept defaults and again select roof plane and draw the bottom one in. Our upstand walls are now done. The next step is to drop in the collared ceiling so again I'm going to go to the attic drop down, I'm going to go to collared ceiling, area of ceiling. Again I encounter the 0.24 level of floor structure relative to top of wall plate set the ceiling height in here. I'm going to leave that as a 2.325. It's going to be plastered, decorated and insulated. And then again, select any roof plane. It can see the roof planes as they exist. So now it just drops that in and we are good to go. 
This also now indicates the area we need for sloping ceiling on both sides. Also means that I can see that these stairs here are also going to be running into a section of lower ceiling, so they'll have to be moved or redesigned. For now, I'm just going to leave them as they are. Now that I have the width of the room available to me, according to this uh, roof pitch and the height of the ceiling, I can start adding things in such as dormers, roof windows, and other infill sections such as stud work inside, the doors for any part room partitions that may go in there, and also, importantly, the floor. As I've got these upstands running across with still work, I could suspend the floor between them. I'm not going to do that just yet, it may busy up the drawing, so I'm going to leave that to a later stage. The next thing I'm going to draw in is a pair of dormers. I'm going to drop them on the front of the building, or say the rear of the building, as it would be down at the bottom here. To do so, I'm going to go to the dormers, I'm going to select a clad roof dormer. I have 1.5 there, so I'm going to leave them as they are. Again, we're going to encounter that 0.2 level of floor structure relative to wall plate. I can increase the height of the ceiling from these dormers, and also can increase the thickness of the dormer walls if required. For now, I'm just going to run through, leave these as defaults, and click finish. So we look at one of the newer tools for placing the dormer, so we can select the roof specification at this point, so as we place the dormer, we will also place the roof on top of it. I'm going to leave this as the same specification as the main roof. The drawing method is going to be just placing the dormer with its width of 1.5, but I could draw a polyline where it would indicate the width of the dormer as I draw it. I'm going to use the value that's already provided, the ceiling height of 2.1, and I'm going to have it so the walls do not extend below the main roof face. So the side cheeks will end when it hits the roof plane. I'm going to click OK. Confirm the roof dimensions. The only one you want to change is spacing guitar lathe. Or laugh. The rest are fine. I'm going to select an apex roof. So we have hip roofs, apex roof with barn hips, some mansard roofs, some gambrel roofs, hip roof with gable, and also a lean-to roof as well to slope back into the main roof. On selecting my apex roof, as I hover over each roof plane, it will automatically start placing the dormer. I want it on this side, so I'm going to place this here. Upon placing the dormer, it's going to give me the same set of options as it's asked me for the main roof, though this time I may select a flat ceiling beneath pitch roof of a cut roof. Just confirm the ceiling height of 2.1 click finish and draw that in that space there and the final one press C to close done with that don't need any more though I can right click to bring back the dormer options again I will need to confirm any changes I've made to the roof on that and place another dormer could be able to place this over here to allow for those stairs to come up. There you go, that, that could, that could uh, cover a multitude of sins. Or I could just place them down here so they're all matched up on one side. Again, draw some ceiling, confirm the height 2.1, and click corner to corner, and the final one, press C. I'm done with that. I'm actually going to put a dormer in the top one here. Again, change my baton gauge. And place a bit of ceiling. Oh, that one was a bit high, so I'm going to drop that again by right clicking, come back to it. can zoom in for accuracy and we're done with that so now I have those dormers in I can go ahead and start placing some windows in this space so I have roof openings and I have the windows for the dormers themselves 
I'm going to go straight ahead and do the roof openings. Choose roof window. And select opening type top hung, as you'll need at least one of them for a loft space. These will be manual. 780, 1178, so 1200 height, colour, white painted, glazing, comfort. There we go, we've just picked out the window. Confirm that, as well as confirming the flashing kit we're going to be needing. I don't need any extra vapour barriers to the roof because this isn't a new roof. Going to skip the blind. Confirm my uh, window specifiers there, everything's the values I want. Click finish and then I can just run through the dimensions. Now the important thing here is, again, we have the level of floor structure relative to top of wall plate, so 0 0.2, and that then combined with the height of top of window from floor level. So if I set that to be top of the window there, say 2.2, a little bit higher. Click next, finish to confirm, and it'll ask me now to select roof plane. So I'm just gonna click in here, and that will land with the 2.2 just there. So I can click to place. Right click to bring it back. Select another window, select another roof plane, and place within that space. I can have a little preview of this now, how it's going with my 3D preview. So I click on the Views in 3D tab. 3D preview. See how that's looking. It's a little bit odd that one there, but it's serving the purpose for demonstration. I'm going to close the 3D preview and continue to place some extra items. So I can go place some windows in here now. Go to my architectural tab, go to windows, PVCU dormer windows, and I'm going to select 1200 by 1050. Confirm the dimensions of this one to go into the wall. As it's a single skin wall, it's only got a reveal depth of zero. I can continue through these now. Click finish, and then I can select the wall I want to place this into. As I'm snapping with this, because I've got F7 or snap mode enabled down here, I can actually use the sensor of the dormer to help me place. Continue through, and place these in each of the dormers. I can then check out how this looks on the views in 3D. So as I look around now, so my window is a little bit big for going into that opening. I could change them to be a bit more suitable, but for now they serve their purpose for demonstration. As I come to the inside here now, I can see I have my upstand walls, the inside of my dormers, my velux windows, and my collared ceiling all rendered. I can continue on now to draw the sloped ceiling and the floor. For the sloped ceiling, I'm going to go to the attic tools again, go sloping ceiling for cut roof, and area of sloping ceiling. Once I've confirmed if I need any additional strengthening rafters, I won't need to because it's going to be a new roof. It's plastered, decorated and insulated. I can select the roof plane and then it'll say give start point in the command window, in which case I can just draw around the area I want to plaster. Now when you come to windows, you can draw around them with a loop. Or you can just go over the top of them, depending how accurate you want to be. So it comes there, I'm going to close that off. I'm going to also pick up that line and tidy that up a little bit. Do the same on the other side. Slope ceiling, click on the area where it has a roof so it can pick up the pitch. 
go all the way around. So I'm using my scroll wheel to go in and out. And also if I hold it down, the middle mouse button, I can move around the screen to where I want to click next. And then C to close. If I've misclicked on any lines, I can zoom back in and move them if I need to. I'm happy with that for now. Go look at my views in 3D, 3D preview. Look on the inside and I can see that's now all been plastered. A couple of things to note, as these are new walls, these are going to be plastered and decorated. If you are doing this to an existing wall, so it could be a partition wall or such, that's now going to be inside of the loft, under the roofs and attics, under the attic drop down, we have the ability to plaster with the attic shaped wall finishing, plaster that gable wall on the end. As example, set height, width of collared ceilings and such, skirting boards, prime decorated and if it's going to be needing to be battened out for insulation. And then we can select the wall that is going to get that treatment. Place the tag and then its orientation. So if this was a renovation, I could now be using this to plaster that internal face. For this, I'm just going to delete that tag as it's the estimated object. And finally, I'm going to place in the floor. So, and again, under attics, we have the relevant floors for the attic, so attic suspended floor, and also the suspended floor for side voids. In this case, I'm going to take my floor all the way across, as I want to have the voids decked, as I could be using them for storage. Before I place this floor, I'm going to place a construction line to help me draw it more accurately. I'm going to go to Drawing and Annotation. Grab a vertical construction line and place it there. I'm going to come back to my roofs and attics. Attic, attic suspended floor, plast and insulated. Run through the dimensions to confirm them. Again, at level of floor structure relative to sub wall plates, so it knows where it's going. Plast to the ceiling below. And this time I'm just going to run from there to there and go all the way across. I'm just going to go straight across the steels. I'm not going to do any sealant, but I am going to put a trimmer. Accept that and run that trimmer from there to there and then right click to drop and say trimmer yes again accept that and put a trimmer across the top of the stairs. It could be that I just run the trimmer between the steels. For now I'm running it from those sections of the wall and I'm done. Don't need any more. And while I'm here, I can actually see that I've overrun with my ceiling a little bit, so just tidy that up a little bit. There we go. Again, I'm going to go back to the floor. Didn't make any changes, so I'm going to accept the defaults. And this time, running up to the stairs. And I've already done the trimmers, so I need not concern myself with them. And because I've drawn the trimmers in, it's very easy to identify where I need to run the floor to. Of course, I could do these in different sections. I can run them up to the steels, and the upstands, and then do them in individual sections. But for speed, I've done it all the way across. That construction line, that's now superfluous. And take a look at my 3D. And have a good look at the house there. It looks fine on the back. On the front, we have our weird window there. That is the loft tools for Plans Express. If you do have any questions, you're more than welcome to give the support team a call on 0117 916 7899 that's 0117 916 7899 or email support at support at hpixel.co.uk Thank you for watching.